I'll take my coat off for this one. Oh. Right, it's, what is it, batting. A friend rang me up and said, how would you like to come out and survey the bats? I said, what? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's this great fun and I'll buy you uh, fish and chips. Where is the choke? Oh, it's no, over no, it's here. Oh, Sorry. It is, yeah. Okay, so I said, yeah, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. So, what happens? We end up doing a bat survey. Now, a bat survey is... Right, a bat survey is a journey of about 95 miles, okay, undertaken in one trip. And the idea is, you go to point A, you operate the equipment for four minutes at a rolling speed of 15 miles an hour out of the window of your car. Okay? You then cease, drive at the traffic to point B, do the same thing, uh, four minutes at 15 miles an hour, and you do this for a total of 16 transects. And these are all done accurate to the length of a car using signposts and farmer's gates and church gateways and all the rest of it on a route that has been done for the last probably between 13 and 19 years by volunteers and volunteers more than twice. You know, I mean, it knocks hell out of the car and you, you do get expenses. You end up paying, you get about 43 day mile and really and truly it's not good for the car. <laughs> so what is, what is being done here is you've got the motor car and you stick out of the back window a bat detector and I've got a bat detector here of the most primitive kind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really looking forward to you saying I've got a bat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was £22 in Maplin. I don't think you'd get better value anywhere on the planet at the minute. It's a DIY one. It's obviously, it's German and it's a schoolboy job where you stick it together you know, in an afternoon from the, the parts supplied. Now, how does it work? It works like a heterodyne radio, which basically generates a little frequency within it, which is close enough to the radio frequency to give you a usable combination of frequencies. So I'll just digress and go about bat detecting here. If I turn it on, you get a little bit of electrical noise, okay? Now, if I... I haven't any money. Has anyone, uh, somebody rattle some keys, please? That's keys being rattled. Okay. Right, okay, in other words, wow. there are frequencies in those keys that you hear. There's frequencies which probably your dog or cat will hear. Okay? Frequencies which are, we say, supersonic are. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you something. Assuming that there are frequencies that an animal will hear and a human won't hear, okay? Let's take somebody's child and put it on somebody else's pony, okay? Now the child is willing but afeard. Now the instinct of a child that's tense and upset and nervous is to keep the mouth shut. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay? A child that's doing that is radiating fear. Believe me, because watch this now. I am a confident child. Hey, hey, happy child. Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> hey, mummy, watch me. Okay? Agreed? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a nervous, fearful child. Oh. This is a signal which would be, eat me, to a predator. So if you're ever cornered by a dog or something, keep your mouth open, okay? I mean, look, I'm near, down there shouting at the thing. No signal. And yet, if I breathe through my nose, QED, okay? There are things which we emit that animals and instruments pick up, okay? So anyway, the bats are chirping away. Okay, if I click the fingernails, that's a typical bat sound on a detector. Now, some bats go tick, 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 other bats go chirp, chirp, chirp. It all depends on the species, the nature of the way they hunt, and the way that they process the sound. There's an immense variety among the animals. What's happening with this is, a bat detector is operating using a 
supersonic microphone, which is very, very high frequency response up into the 80, maybe 80 kilohertz. It's operating for a few seconds at a time, and then it's blanking off, during which time the car has moved a considerable distance, and it, comes, it opens the window again, takes a little reading. Okay? It stores that in the form of a time-expanded um, result which means that it comes, the sound, instead of being up at 80 kilohertz, comes down to 16 kilohertz, perhaps, in which case it can be recorded on the cell phone, which has an app that does this for it. In other words, you're snatching two seconds of listening time, processing it, and recording it as um, eight seconds of um, cell phone time. And this record then goes off in a chip at the end of the day to a university somewhere and somebody sits down with headphones and a spectrograph and identifies the bat. The cell phone also um, puts GPS information on. Now then the result of all these things is a lovely book published by the Irish Irish Bat Survey and it gives details of I mean, it's a real tabletop book, bat roosts with thousands of rats, bats, bats in the cellar. Um, all sorts of stately homes and places. Bearing in mind that the bat is protected by international law. You can't disturb a bat, chase a bat, without a license. Okay? The bat is, and it can be of very great importance if you are trying to get plant permission for something. And there are bats, and they, um, Environment people realise that there are bats, they'll send the bat inspector out to inspect them. And before you demolish or alter or even clean or fumigate, you probably have to erect alternative housing for them. You know, you have to build a tower and put rough old timber or something like that. I'll tell you a story. I was in a neighbour's attic. He was going to do and get some planning permission, and I was with a bat inspector, a chap who had a licence to do so. I'll just, I'll just sum up, okay? And I says, well, I don't see any bats. He says, there's a roost up there. And I said, where? He says, up in the very apex of the roof. I says, how do you know it's a roost? He says, it's the only clean place. There are no spiders. Look, it's, it's almost polished, you see? Because a bat does like to have its little nest free of, you know, critters. And I says, well, that's marvelous. He says, I can tell you what sort of bat it was. Well, he's not there. How do you know? Oh, he says, but look, and there's a little conical pile of droppings on the floor. You see? And he says, watch. And he says, that's Pepistrel. He says, yes, Pepistrel. I can tell it's gritty, because Pepistrels eat small flying beetles. Oh, I said, all right, all right. He says, now, if it was a Leisner's bat, and I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, it'd be silky soft, because they eat flying moths. <laughs> and I said, yeah. But what does it taste like? <laughs> <laughs> Our relationship was not the same. <laughs> I, I could go on about um, audio signal processing, but I won't. So, any questions? Thank you very much,